Before we continue with our exciting Manifesting Abundance journey, here is just a small recap, few of the most important points or things to remember from this second chapter of our course about Map of Consciousness. First of all, your emotions, thoughts, memories, perceptions and even reactions are a consequence of your vibratory state. So you need to change your vibratory state first. You probably heard somewhere that uh, in order to have a beautiful, wonderful, abundant life, all you need to do is think happy thoughts. And then somehow universe will fulfill all your desires. Well, that's kind of true, but it will work well for a minute <laughs> because if you are thinking happy thoughts out of fear, for example, because you are afraid that if you don't, something terrible is going to happen, then it won't work. You will just close your eyes and you will think happy thoughts and you will try not to think about your fears and then your phone will ring and you will jump. Who's calling me now? What's going on? And there goes your happy thought. If you really want to have happy thoughts, and memories, and emotions, and perceptions, and reactions, you need to change your vibratory level first. Because your mind is playing tricks on you. It only justifies vibration you are already in. Or if you want to be really smart about it, we don't see things as they are. We see things as we are. And this really beautiful quote taken from Talmud, one of the holy books or scriptures from Hebrew tradition. And maybe you're wondering, why didn't we use it earlier? Because it's so beautiful, it all sums up so beautifully. Why didn't we use that quote earlier? Well, because it's not educational. Because that quote is so beautiful that works on every possible level. It won't challenge you to reevaluate your point of view. You can say that to a person in fear, or in anger, or in guilt, or in love, in peace, and everyone will say, mmm, yeah, nicely done, nicely said. But let's take, for example, some, something else. Let's say, love your enemy. You go and say, love your enemy to a person who is in fear. And he will probably go, what do you mean? What do you mean, love your enemy? Did you see him? What did he say? <laughs> that sounds like a trick to me. I should be extra careful now. Or if you say, love your enemy to someone who is in anger, he will probably say, you know what? Screw him and screw you too. <laughs> And if you say, love your enemy to someone who is in pride, he will probably say, love your enemy. You're kidding me, right? I defeat my enemies. I don't love them. <laughs> or someone in guilt might say, you know what? He started it first. <laughs> so love your enemy really challenges you to reevaluate your position. It won't work. It won't make any sense to you if you are below the threshold of courage of 200. So really, that's, that's much, much more educational than we don't see things as they are, we see things as we are. But now, when you understand what that really means, that all your emotions and thoughts and memories and perceptions and reactions are just a well, consequence of your vibratory state, but now when you really understand what that means, you can print it and put it on, on your working desk, for example. Okay. Third important point. Your vibratory state has nothing to do with external circumstances, only with how you choose to respond to these circumstances. Therefore, you are not a victim. You choose your vibratory state. So, happiness is a choice. 
Happiness is an inside job. It is not dependent on the external circumstances. And this is really crucial. Your vibratory state and therefore your emotions, thoughts, memories, perceptions, reactions and so on and so on have nothing to do with the external circumstances. External circumstances are always neutral. You choose how to perceive them. It's a choice. And since it is a choice, you are not a victim. So, choosing how to respond, not react, how to respond to external circumstances is the basis for happiness, creativity and success. Your job is to take care of your internal vibration only. Everything else, inspiration, happiness, success, memories, emotions, thoughts, perceptions, reactions are coming out of your internal vibratory state or internal frequency or frequency level or whatever you wish to call it. And this is really important. Your vibration is contagious. Therefore, being in a high vibration is the most selfless thing that you can possibly do. Your vibration is contagious. And when you are somewhere here, then your vibratory state will influence your family and your friends and your colleagues and your neighbors. When you are somewhere here, then you will influence friends of a friends and the colleagues of your neighbor and friends of your colleagues. And when you are here, you will influence friends of a friends of a friends of a friends. And therefore, power of higher vibratory states rises exponentially. And being in a high vibration is the most selfless thing that you can do. If you really want to help people, be happy, be as high as you can on this consciousness map. A lot of people are holding back. They are somehow, they feel guilt about being happy because, you know, so many people are not. So what are they going to say if they see me happy? Or they are even afraid to be happy because somehow they were led to believe that happiness is a you know, finite resource pool. So if I'm happy today, that means that I'm be, I will be unhappy tomorrow. It is not true. Happiness is contagious and it perpetuates itself. So the happier you are, the happier you will be. So this is the most important thing to remember from this second chapter. And that is, you need to change your vibratory state first. Everything else will then fall into its place. But how to do it? I'm so glad you asked.